Let's have a look, Jazzy. Very cool. <laughs> right, we're heading to Tesco's quickly because we've run out of milk and it's, it's been one of those days where I'm trying to catch up, so a slow day. But that's okay because I haven't covered any EV news recently either and there's been some things going on. So we're going to do that when I've got my milk. Alright, I'm back in a minute. Fingers, Jasper. Okay, let's talk EV news. Oh. But first, some of you might know I've had a bit of sound trouble with this particular camera because of the autofocus. Now they don't want to take the big camera to the US, but I would like to have good audio where possible. So, first test is going to be just using the internal mic in the phone. So I'm just gonna pop that down there. And now what I'm going to do is put this lapel mic on and we'll see how we go with that. Okay, it is now recording through this little microphone, which I guess in a noisy environment is probably gonna be the way to go, but let's crack on with the news. Firstly, the UK has basically, it's kind of weird, the sales of EVs and plugins have sort of dipped a little bit in April from March, but the actual percentage of new car sales has gone up to 1.79, which is actually, you know, it's moving in the right direction. I remember the days when, you know, everyone got overexcited about the fact that it had broken 1%. Basically what happened was everyone rushed out and bought their cars in March. So the March sales of cars were huge because of this vehicle excise duty, car tax. They were going to change to a new system, which would mean that for a lot of cars, you'd wind up paying more. We're still quite a long ways off Norway, where they're sort of hitting regularly 30% plus. Small steps, we'll get there, we'll get there. Moving on to Nissan, they have released a teaser photo of the new second, or was it third? I've got really confused with the generations on the Nissan Leaf, but the next gen Leaf, the one that's going to have a substantially longer range. Only slight issue is this teaser pic is, you know, like a headlight. So you don't get a huge amount of information from it. It looks like a nice headlight though. Although one thing is clear, they've obviously moved away from the slightly funky styling in the original Nissan Leaf. I actually didn't mind that styling personally. So from the front, I would give it a eight out of 10. From the back, I would give it a six out of 10, but from bang side on, urgh, three out of 10. At least it shows that Nissan is serious about this September launch and they are starting to get the PR machinery sort of turning to hopefully introduce this car in a, in a good way and, and really drive some EV sales with it. This next news item is sort of related to Nissan as well, actually, because, well, it's Renault and they're kind of like Nissan, sort of. Renault and Qualcomm have designed a wireless charging system based on the Halo stationary charging version that can charge a car at up to 20 kilowatts whilst that car is driving at up to 60 miles an hour. Now they've only done sort of a 100 meter test section. I think the issue with things like this is similar to a lot of the issues behind many things in that the cost of installing and building this system, you know, because they've only got a 100 meter test track, they really need that to be like two kilometers. And even then, by the time you've traveled, those two kilometers at 60 miles an hour, you're going to have put in a tiny amount of power, you know, barely more than you've used anyway, even with 20 kilowatts of charging. To get the investment to build that technology is almost certainly not gonna be forthcoming in my opinion, especially in a world where batteries are getting more and more energy dense and over time people can drive five, 600 miles and recharge a couple of hundred miles in 10 minutes and these are things which are probably going to happen within five to ten years anyway and it would take them five to ten years just to put one lane of this into the m25 motorway around london interesting but probably not in my opinion going to be the future of how people charge their cars at least not on motorways i suppose within a city environment 
it might work better and it would certainly work very well by the side of the road. If you had an entire line of charging bays where you could just pull into any place, it's not really technically charging whilst moving in this situation because you would be parking the car up, but it would mean that you could park anywhere along the side of that road and your car would receive 20 kilowatts of power. How you're ever gonna get the council to actually pay for something like that, I have no idea. And Tesla Energy. They are gearing up to start production at what Elon Musk likes to call Gigafactory 2, the Buffalo factory where they produce solar panels. And I think they're gonna start off with producing the slimline sort of proper solar panels. But then over time, they're gonna to transition to producing the slates and, and various other tile products as well which I think is brilliant, you know, get some economies of scale in there. I think that's how we're gonna, we're gonna change the world. In fact, I'm actually going to do an entire video on this at some point because it occurred to me earlier today that Tesla is the reason why I'm convinced that EVs are gonna be the future because everything about that car is 100% perfect for the mass market except the price. What drives the price more than anything else is the cost of the batteries. So if the batteries come down in price, then the number of people that you can provide that perfect everyday vehicle to goes up, which is of course what Elon Musk wants, it's what his shareholders want, and it's what the consumers who queue up around the block to put an order in for Model 3, it's what they want too. And I think a very similar thing is going to happen when it comes to things like solar roof tiles. Gotta drop this in there while we're talking about Tesla. Google have just found that Tesla is amongst certain age groups, the coolest brand globally, but amongst automakers, it is the coolest brand. It is not of any surprise to me whatsoever. And that is a large, massive, huge part of why the Tesla stock is valued as it is. Because with that level of brand buy-in, they've got the opportunity to make things work for mainstream consumers that nobody else really can, whether that's EVs or power storage for your home or solar panels for your roof or solar tiles or whatever. They've, they've got the oomph behind them to make these things a reality. So Tesla might have one of the coolest brands out there, but they're actually not that well known still, amazingly. I think something like 60% of the survey respondents in, in the sort of millennials category didn't actually know who Tesla were, which kind of blows my mind. But that has been my experience. Not everyone has heard of them yet, which is probably what you get for not investing in traditional marketing methods and just relying on things like YouTube. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and news reports, of course. You know, I mean, they, they use news agencies as the sort of unofficial marketing department. It seems like, you know, fuel cells just they, they refuse to die. And I think a large part of that is because of the administration in Tokyo. I just read a press release from, that was jointly released from Nissan, Toyota. If you're in Japan and you have anything to do with cars or hydrogen fuel cells, you'll be on this list. There's 11 businesses, they're all huge, and they've all committed to expanding and commercializing hydrogen fuel stations. The rest of the world has basically decided that this is a fool's errand. In Japan, however, if they put enough money into the development of the infrastructure, then they can sell a reasonable number of the cars. And if they do that, then the price will come down and maybe hydrogen fuel cells will have some sort of limited future. But I still don't really understand why anyone thinks it's a desirable place to go. That's the bit that confuses me. One of the oft-touted reasons why Japan likes hydrogen as a fuel is because they don't want to be using nuclear power stations too much, you know, because of the whole Fukushima thing. They don't really have any energy resources of their own, you know, gas or oil or anything like that. Hydrogen is not a, it's not a fuel source. You still, there are still people out there that seem to think that the oceans are full of hydrogen and you can just pour it into your car and drive off. No, it's just an energy carrier, exactly the same as a battery. The only difference is it takes twice as much energy to charge up your hydrogen battery. Use ordinary batteries like everyone else. It's turned off the screen. I'm hoping it's still recording. 
but that's a hope. I don't know. It's a learning experience, which is one of the reasons why I'm trying these things out now rather than leaving it and trying them out when I'm in the US. Because, you know, I've got the opportunity to have a go and if it doesn't work well now, do something slightly different next time. Today's video has been a bit of a catch up one for me in that hopefully it will be reasonably easy to edit, assuming this audio thing works. Oh my word, that's what happens when mummy goes to Costco. Oh my God. No, 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 this is just the start of it. Oh wow, dude, so cool. And they come in a nice case, don't they? Good job on the sunny, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they look really good. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram if you don't already, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so, this is actually the second time I've shot this because the first time I recorded all the audio on here and, and then deleted it. Hmm, not so great. So let's have a second go. Okay, I'll put this off again. Unbelievable. Right. Okay. <laughs>